how to combine mesh designs in Photoshop. These are mesh designs created on a layer, something like this. First thing to do, create a pattern. And I'm going to create a pattern using a very, very thin document. So image menu and image size, just to show you the size, 5,000 by 20. So quite thin. And I'm going to fill it with a gradient. I'm going to fill it with something. It'll be a solid colour. doesn't matter. I'm not going to use a gradient later. So just create something. And once you've done that, go to the edit menu and define the pattern. Edit and define pattern. Give it a name. Click OK. Up to you. Now you've got it stored away as a preset. So I've now got another document and this is going to be the document I'm going to use. So image menu again, image size, and I'm going with 3000 by 2,220 and just cancel there. Just wanted to show you the size of the document I'm using. Firstly, create a new layer. So layer and new layer. Don't have to if you don't want to use all these techniques. It's helpful to create a layer. So once you've done that, you could fill the layer. However, you'll notice there's an error. Because I'm using place along path. Now I'm selecting the design I've just created, the pattern I've just created. I'm using pattern, I'm using that script, but it will fail. Click OK and it will come up with an error. There's no path. Before you run that fill command, you have to create a path. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool. Just go over to the ellipse tool, select that, and use the path option right at the top left. Create a fairly large circle. Hold down the shift key and the jack drag out there. Now release. Now you can run the fill command. So edit menu and fill, just run Exactly as before, click OK, and now it will display a preview as well as some settings here. Now I'm using maximum scale of 1.25. Now you can vary the spacing. Go for that. Minus 887 pixels. Just experiment. Other settings, 0, 0, 100, 0, and 0. Click OK. And that will generate the design. So you know you've got that design. You can see a lovely mesh design there coming out from that path. Now what you can do, you can go and convert it into a smart object. Don't have to do that. It doesn't have to be converted. I'm not going to use it later. But if you wanted to use it later, it's really quite good to have a smart object. So I'm just going to remove the pass as well. So there's the pass panel. Yes, just want to delete it. That's via the window menu. So you can see the layer there. So go to layer menu. And at this point, I could use the layer style straight away, but I'm going to convert it into a smart object. So smart objects and convert to smart object. Then go to layer menu, layer style. And I'm going to go with bevel. And you can see, just very subtle bevel, just give it a bit of depth. And you can vary that up to you. Also, you can go to gradient overlay. And this is quite useful. That's why I didn't particularly care about the gradient before, because I'm going to use the gradient overlay here. And there's a whole variety of different gradients available. Now I'm using the radial, so you can vary the scale just to change it slightly. You can see the design there. And also you can add a drop shadow. Just give it, again, a little bit more depth. And you can vary that as well.
Now, you could stop at this point if that's all you want. But what you can do, you can manipulate the design in many other ways. Click OK there. Now, I like to also, again, go and convert it to a smart object. So, layer menu and smart objects, convert to smart object. Now that's Smart Object now contains the original design plus the styles. And of course you can go back and edit those styles at any point now. Because it's a Smart Object. And you can do that via the Layers panel. You know, filter Menu and Liquify. And this is a great thing about Smart Filters, Smart Objects. You can edit them and change them at any point later. I'll just bring up the liquify panel. And I've currently got bloat. I don't want that one. I want the one at the top. Let's go and set that. And also the size of brush is pretty large. You can, of course, vary the size of brush. But what I want to do is I want to create some abstract shapes at the center. I don't want a circle. I could use a circle, of course. But I just wanted to show you can distort it. Now that's a bit too small, maybe. You can always undo, of course, Control Z. And you can warp the actual mesh itself if you wish. You can continue to distort that. Once you've done that, just apply it. Click OK. Slightly cut off at the bottom. You can go all the way around the edge if you want, just to pull it out distort it in numerous ways as well. It doesn't have to be a perfect mesh. Now you've got your design. But well, what you can do, you can now duplicate it, that smart object. So hold down the Alt or Option key and drag to duplicate that layer. Or just duplicate the layer via the layer menu, another option. And then you can reposition it, you can resize it, you can rotate it. So now more useful, just bring the navigator in. You can find that via the window menu. So you can resize it. Obviously you can't push it too far, but push it up to a reasonable, you can just resize it. And then what you can do, you can also rotate it. And as you're doing that, you'll notice the liquify disappears it will reappear and you can see now you get this lovely layer effect you can rotate it as well so you'll notice of course you end up with slight over the edge and you can always extend it a bit further if you wish rescale it and you can see now what you can do you can do this five six ten times just to build up multiple layers you can use this approach to create all kinds of very abstract designs. With this smart object, you can also go to the layer menu and layer styles and maybe add another drop shadow or maybe add a bevel, etc. Very that. As well, of course, you could modify the mesh itself, the color, gradient overlay or color overlay. Maybe use blending modes to combine them. Click OK there. And you can warp that, you can distort it again using the edit menu. And you can, of course, again, I've done duplicate it again. And you can create three, four, five, many layers. And they can all be manipulated to rotate it, scaled, just to build up a and also you can apply additional effects. You don't have to keep, obviously, you know, you've got that liquefier there. You can just vary it. That's a great, great thing about smart filters. Just go back and just distort it again. Drag out the edges if you wish. And you can do the same with all the layers. So if you do this, like, duplicate multiple times, you can then create maybe different angles 
maybe different liquefiers applied to each to create different designs there for that central I mean, to create some very unusual effects. And of course, I haven't even done blending modes if you want to go make it even odder. As well as apply additional effects. That's the only effect I'm using, liquefy. I'm going to flatten the layer, so go to Layer Menu and Flatten Image. I'm going to show you another example. This time I'm going to use two layers with a very basic circle design. And instead of gradients, I'm going to use a solid colour. Which on the side, the ellipse tool. So I've just got the ellipse tool. There's no, there's just a layer. That's it. Just got one. I'm on a layer, and I've got the ellipse tool. So what I can do, I can just again go over to the edit menu and fill, and of course I can. Use the same custom pattern. I have to keep it the same. OK. And then in this, I can go and change things if I want. I mean, obviously, this place, I'm not going to change it, but I could maybe reduce the size of spacing or maybe change the scale, etc. Again, what I can do, I can go to a layer menu and turn it into a smart object, but I'm not going to go. So I think I'm just going to quickly go to layer menu, change my mind. Yes, I will convert it into a smart object. Layer menu and layer style again. And this time, maybe go for a stroke instead. A bit nice. Black edge there. And instead of gradient, you don't have to use gradients. I mean, gradients look really great. You know, drop shadow as well. But you can add just a color overlay. See the design there, but color overlay. Maybe go with a yellow. Bright, intense sun effect. Click OK. And what you can do again, of course, hold down the Alt or Option key and duplicate the design or use the layer menu to du duplicate it. You might also like to remove the circle. Now you could, of course, just reapply the fill again maybe create another layer and then apply the fill to that maybe change the path so you could get the smaller but you can also just simply just resize that design and then shift it move it around and again that creates a nice bit of depth there and also what you can do go to layer menu layer style and you can still go and modify the color overlay it's still got a style so instead of yellow, go for orange. Click OK. And you've got your design there. And you could do this repeatedly. Maybe create another another layer. So hold down the alter option gear again, drag and create another layer. And then maybe make it a blue design or a green design. So you can just sort of build up multiple layers and combine them. Maybe use blending modes. And you can always, of course, turn it into a smart object at any point as well. If you go to the edit menu, you'll notice the transform command is transform path. I don't want that. What I want is the path deselected. So go to the path panel, deselect it or delete it, and then go back to the edit menu and transform will be available. Once you've got the transform command available, you can use maybe distort, perspective, warp etc i'm going to go with distort distort the layer and once you've done that you can always go to the warp or perspective or maybe rotate up to you in this example i'm only using two layers you could of course use 
10 layers. Change the colours in all kinds of different ways. Maybe use gradients instead of solid colours. You can also apply additional effects. You could always apply oil paint or maybe blur or blur gallery or maybe one of the gallery filters. Up to you. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Always any new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator and many, many others. Please add some comments. Always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.